Have you ever wondered what makes a spoon look bent when you stick it into a cup? Or why your eye can be magnified? Why can you use, remember in National Treasures when they use the glass to look at the time on the clock? What makes a glass magnify your eyes or even make it look warbly? It's a phenomenon known as refraction. So the glass, why does it magnify? We're going to save that for the next video because that's just a little too much to put in one video. So we will see you later. You can start the beginning of your pretest and you can start the index or refraction worksheet if you're in regular physics. And the next video will be on the critical angle. So what is refraction? Refraction is the bending of light rays as they go, you can spell, as they go from one medium into another. And this occurs because the light rays actually slow down. So as a light ray goes in from air into water, it's going from an area where the molecules are like do 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 to where they're like really close to each other. And so the wave, remember this is a wave that's coming in. The wave as it's bouncing back and forth, when it goes through the air, it's not interacting very much with the particles at all. But once it hits all these little water particles, it has to talk to all of them on its way through. And so it turns out that it slows down. And that slowing down causes it to bend. And so it'll bend towards the normal. Okay, Remember when we were doing before, the normal is perpendicular to our surface. So this is our normal here. So we'll clean that up. Just like when we were talking about forces, the normal force was perpendicular to our surface. So our normal is perpendicular to the surface where it comes in. So where the ray hits, that's where we're going to draw our normal. And we're going to see this in class in a demonstration. But just trust me from now, for now in that when it goes from a less dense medium, like air, to a more dense medium, it bends towards the normal. So here's how it would go if it was going to go straight. If it we're going to go straight, it would go that way. But it's instead of going straight through like that, it's going to bend towards the normal. And so our bent ray is going to look like this. And it's going to be bent towards the normal. See that's towards the normal. Here's our Here's our normal here, and it got closer to the normal. So this aim, we always measure our angles from the normal. Now, there actually is a way to say how much it gets bent. The index refraction is basically what brings this all together. And it is a measure of how much this, the light rays slow down when they go into a different medium. It's a constant for that medium. It can be used to identify the medium just like density can. And it also tells us how much, how many degrees that angle changes. And so to calculate the index of refraction, we do this. The index of refraction is n. C is the speed of light. And nothing can go faster than the speed of light. So whatever velocity we get down here, this is the velocity in the medium. So the light's going to slow down and it's going to go at a different speed in the medium. But it's this index or refraction here that we're really going to focus on. This is always going to be greater than 1. And that makes sense if you really think about what we're dividing. The speed of light, which there can be nothing bigger than, so this is the biggest speed we can have divided by a smaller number. So when you divide a big number by a smaller number, you get something bigger than 1. 
So that's one equation that we're going to be using. And another is Snell's Law. And Snell's Law is n sine theta, which is equal to n sine theta. And the difference between the two n sine thetas is this is your incident light ray, and this is your refracted light ray. And so just make sure that you keep the N with the angle that's with it. So if we had, okay, and this got bent towards the normal, okay, so this would be the incident and this would be the refracted, we're going to use this angle, we're going to use those two together, and we're going to use those two together. So just make sure they're in the same spot. It doesn't really matter which one you call which. This is a table of the indexes or refractions of some materials. Um, air has an index or refraction of 1, that's going to be something that you're just going to be expected to know. So for the N for air is 1. Because basically, I mean, yes, it does slow down, but it's like 1.00079 or something like that. It's so close to 1 that it's really not worth changing. Yes, air or light does change speed as it goes from outer space into our atmosphere. And that is what causes sunsets. So... Yes, it does happen, but um, for the most part, we're just going to use one as the index of refraction for air. Notice that diamond has a huge index of refraction. Okay, that 2.42, that's huge. Because if you look at all these other numbers, you see that they're on the order of you know, 1 point something, 1 point something, 1 point something. Notice also that the indexes of refraction are given for a certain frequency of light. And that's because the index does change depending on the light. And that's actually what causes a prism to be able to work. If you look at this picture of the prism, you can see that here's the white light coming in. And remember, it's made of all the colors of the rainbow. But the red light gets bent the least, and the purple light gets bent the most. And that's because purple has a higher frequency. Remember we were talking about the light waves interacting with the molecules inside the medium? Well, purple, since it has a higher frequency, okay, remember red, low, low frequency, and purple had the high frequency. Since it has a higher frequency, it interacts with these molecules even more and so when it interacts with those molecules, it slows down even more. So it gets bent even more. So basically, the more you get slowed down, the more you get bent. And the greater your index of refraction. We should probably write that down. All right, so we're going to pause this video, and we're going to write these things down. The more light ray slows down, the greater our index of refraction the more the light ray bends, and the closer the light ray is to the normal, which means it's going to give you a smaller angle, because remember we measure our angles from the normal, just like we did with reflection. So back to our cup. Why does the spoon look bent? Okay, so the part of the spoon at the top is just going, the light's coming from the spoon, and it's going through the air, through the air, through the air, and it's coming to our eyes, and so there's not a lot of changes here, but the light inside here is going from the water into our eyes. So do you see that? It's coming from the water and then into our eyes through the glass. And so let's kind of look at this from a top view. So the light from our spoon is coming up this way. It's going to hit this surface. Okay, here's our angle of incidence, and now we're going from water, which is more dense, it has a bigger N, into air. So remember when it went from air into water, it bent towards the normal? 
Well, now it's going the other way. It's going from water to air, and it's going away from the normal. So see how this would be how it was straight, but instead it's going to go away from the normal. Now, remember when we were talking about mirrors, okay, that light ray, let's take the, kind of take the spoon out here for a sec. Here's where our spoon was. This is where our spoon was. Now here is where it looks like it came from. So we're going to make this really, if we extend this ray back, it looks like it came from here. And so it's closer to the surface. It looks like it's closer to the surface. And the way that we perceive things that are closer is that they're bigger. So if it's closer, it's bigger. If it's smaller, it's further away. It's not really closer. So if I were to like stick my fingers straight down here, I wouldn't touch the spoon until I got all the way down to here. The old Indians used to have to figure out how to get past this when they would go fishing because they the fish would look like it was here, but it was really down here because the light ray looks like it came from here, but it really comes from down here. So they would have to aim below the fish if they wanted to find where the fish was.